Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. I'd like to return to one of my favorite topics today, the four immeasurables. Yay! <laughs> Discussed uh, most fully in the Pali, in the Pali can- canon and within the Theravada tradition. But while these are spelled out explicitly in Theravada, um, having regard and caring for all beings or metta, um, it's also carried over into Mahayana. And loving kindness as uh, metta is translated and caring uh, naturally opens up into karuna, compassion. And karuna, uh, is a mainstay of Mahayana Buddhism. There are actually three types of Buddhist love. Um, loving kindness, that's metta, compassion, uh, karuna. And um, the most interesting one, I think, because it's unusual and not discussed as much, and not my main topic for tonight, but it's uh, uh, mudita or sympathetic joy. And you may notice that all three of these kinds of love that are promoted in Buddhism are selfless. Um, Although we're often told to make sure to include ourselves in our projection of metta, of caring for beings, since we are also a being, so we, uh, we count ourselves in the group. Um, sometimes it's said uh, that we can fill ourselves up with the feeling of metta, of loving kindness, fill ourselves with that energy. And then from the overflow of that energy, we can uh, project it to all beings. And, That's a nice way to have a a sort of a unified field of metta. And I feel that there's a synchrony between the projection of loving kindness towards all beings and the dedication of merit that we do, where we take the fruits of our practice and transmit it to beings who are in need. Um, And and by the way, I, I love the the word loving kindness. Uh, It's really unique to Buddhism and it's a very special word. I think it's translated nicely. Uh, Loving kindness, what a a nice uh, idea. Um, So a quick review of how the three forms of love in Buddhism kind of fit together. Uh, Loving kindness or metta represents the deep caring and recognition of connection that we share with all beings. Out of this comes karuna or compassion, caring about the suffering of beings. And with that, the desire to alleviate their suffering to the extent that we're able. And the third form of love, once again, my personal favorite, is an antidote for envy and jealousy of any kind. It is mudita or sympathetic joy in which we rejoice in others' well being and happiness. Uh, which is a a lovely idea. So when others do well, instead of being envious, we vicariously enjoy their happiness and share in it. We celebrate their happiness. So you could say when anyone is happy, we also get to be happy with them. And there's always something to celebrate somewhere. So we don't have to only worry about suffering, although that is most important in a way to try to alleviate suffering, but we can also enjoy the good moments that beings are having as well. Um, so that's a, a special one. It's, uh, you could say um, that we could even congratulate the new buds that are coming out now in the spring and the baby chipmunks and be happy on their behalf. Life is continuing and doing its thing. So there's a lot to be joyful about. So to summarize in another way, these three forms of love cover every human situation from a caring point of view. Metta is right there in the middle of the barometer. Um, 
in the normal course of affairs, we have an overall feeling of loving kindness for all beings. That's the universal uh, love. Kind of like when you hope for the best for those you care about in your family, you want them to do well and be well. But when times are bad and beings are troubled, that is a downturn on the barometer and compassion and empathy kick in to care about and try to help those in need. And when times are good and the barometer is on the upswing, we share in the happiness of beings who are doing well. Up, down, and in the middle, we, exper we experience caring love for all beings. So now for a personal story. Two personal stories, but the first one first. Uh, I, I was walking down the street yesterday and I was passing some people on the street and I could see them coming. Uh, on that particular skinny street, and we have many of those in Washington, DC, where I take many of my walks, passing someone is a bit of a potential train wreck. And folks that are younger than me uh, seem to pass by in an awful hurry with callous disregard for the potential consequences. I am not that old, but I am too old to suddenly jump out of the way of an oncoming pedestrian. Sometimes though, it's just a matter of coordinating past each other and getting rather close to a face-to-face -face encounter in the process. So you're not necessarily going to knock into the other person, but you will have to see them at rather close quarters. So I saw two people coming from the opposite direction. On this occasion, I began to feel a little self-conscious. What's the expression on my face? Who are these people? How will they regard me? Will they try to run me over? I thought to myself, I think I should be a little more advanced than this. Why am I feeling self-consciousness? But it was there. So I thought I'd try an experiment and see if I could dissolve my self-consciousness, which was causing me a mild increase in dukkha. So first I thought, I'll just drop my self-concept. Without a self, I won't be able to feel self-conscious. So I kind of went amorphous, realized there was no separate self, and then looked up at the oncoming human. And no, it didn't work. Even without a self, I feel, still felt self-conscious. Very weird. So then another strategy occurred to me. The next pedestrian was a slightly concerned slightly tired looking young guy. And I thought to myself, I wonder what it's like to be him right now and what he's feeling and thinking about. And the self-consciousness vanished instantaneously. I was pretty amazed and pretty surprised, but I continued to remain curious about this guy's life who I had tuned into a little bit. And while I was thinking about him, I really didn't have any concern about myself. This reminded me of an experience I had had almost 10 years ago after the death of my father. I was feeling particularly vulnerable walking down a New York street in a slushy, rainy winter's night and feeling pretty sorry for myself in a lot of internal pain. As I crossed the street in the slushy, rainy night, I saw a young mom trying to navigate across the slushy water with a carriage that contained her young toddler son. He seemed okay, but she seemed just exhausted and overwhelmed and a sudden welling up of compassion arose for her. It was a physical reality that filled me up with a kind of caring energy. And at the same time, I was overwhelmed myself by the feeling of love that I suddenly had for her, somebody who I didn't know at all. It was caring love that wanted her to be okay. For that moment, I stopped thinking about myself and my pain and my circumstances, and I wished there was some way I could help her. Before I had a chance to offer to get the carriage through the water, she had already completed the task and moved on. But I was left looking at all the people walking through the slush, all with different concerns and problems and expressions on their faces. And I had a feeling of caring about them, wanting them to be okay. If I checked back with myself, I still had my own concerns, 
but now it was in the midst of this feeling of connection with other people who were all in the same or similar shape uh, that I was in one way or another. We were all the same on the level of our humanity and we were together in that interconnected network. It left me staring at the crowd with my mouth open. All these people going through so much and feeling a connection with them instead of walking by myself through my one tunnel of life. And when I think back of, on the expression on that young mom's face, um, she seemed like it, she was just having such a difficult time and so tired. It's still just a momentary thing, but it still moves me to think about it and, and representing all the people who are going through so many things. So the two immeasurables, those two, which are the most important factors in every school of Buddhism, from Theravada to Zen and back again, are metta or loving kindness, caring about other people, and karuna, compassion, caring about how beings are doing when they're having a hard time. And sometimes just seeing that someone you come across is having a hard time and asking them how they're doing can actually be helpful to them and help that person to carry on, just to know that somebody had thought of them or cared about them. That feeling of interconnected caring is good for our connection to others. It also makes us feel that we ourselves are not alone in the middle of the storm as an isolated self. And this may even be a shortcut to no self. A little earlier in that same Zen walk that I took yesterday to come back to the near present, I came upon a house that was under construction. It was a very big house. And on the block that it was on, it was probably worth about two to $4 million in my estimation. These houses are expensive. I'm sure the people who lived in that house were very happy to be getting the repairs as well as the fact that they had that house. There were several guys who were working on the house on different parts of the roof, strapped to chimneys or other supports on the inclined roofs and they were chipping away at the old roof tiles to get them off. Very arduous work, bent over on the inclined roofs, connected to the roofs by these straps. One guy was on the highest roof and was so small I could hardly make him out. That house was truly a mansion and went way, way, way up into the sky. And that's where the guy was, all the way up. I'm pretty sure that none of these hardworking guys who appeared to be immigrants working on doing this kind of work had a house like this or a million dollars to spare. I'm pretty sure. And I was filled with appreciation for their effort. And I thought, well, these are the guys that keep the world running. They plug up the leaks, they rebuild the roofs, they repair the roads. And you know, it's not as if we're gonna get out of our car and fill a pothole. <laughs> you know, somebody, somebody is doing all that stuff. Maybe appreciating their work doesn't help them that much, but it's something. And it was helpful to me. When I worry about the pain in my legs that I have these days, or some task that I have to do, I can think of those guys working their butts off way up in the air, doing hard labor for low wages, strapped to a roof. And I feel blessed, appreciative, and compassionate. If you wave to someone who's doing that kind of work, like the repair men and women on the road digging through the tar, sometimes in the summer sun, and the, through the concrete to fix a water line, and give them a smile and let them know you appreciate what they're doing rather than being annoyed at the delay like so many people are, maybe you make their work a tiny drop more pleasant. Maybe so. And sometimes if you look at yourself in the third person, not as a self, but as a being. That is to say, not as a separate self, but as a sentient being among sentient beings. You can see your own challenges and suffering from a bit of a distance, like way up on the roof, and even have compassion for yourself. <laughs> 